Hey, what's going on? This one is about the Israelites. Now, I've been watching these guys for years and years and years. I love their organization. And I especially love the way that they literally read the Bible and follow the Bible rules or laws. And I like the way that they expose the phony Christians who think that they know the Bible and they really don't know it. All they know is what the preacher told them. And they don't follow the laws because obviously uh, most of the pork and shrimp cons uh, consumption is by the Christians. So this is what I like about the Israelites. And you see the videos. And every time uh, the Christians think they know what they're talking about, they get frustrated or they over talk them because they don't want to be wrong or because they're lying. Everybody knows in the Christian church, that's where you find the worst human beings. The, the, the former or present hookers, the drug addicts, the murderers, the homosexuals, the worst of the worst. Not prison, but in the Christian church. Um, so I've been following groups because I like to see who's real and who's not. The Israelites appear to be the realest. I've already shown that the nation of Islam is a total fraud and they're anti-black and pro-white. They just sound like they're pro-black because they talk about what well, they used to call the white man the devil and the cracker and all that kind of stuff. Now they don't anymore. So they've been busted. Cold busted. Now, what's the other group? The Moors. Of course, they, they, they spawned the nation of Islam. But they're all Freemason uh, outfits. And the Moors, they, you know, they have their... Moors and the nation of Islam, they both claim to be Muslims or have Muslim-like attributes, but they're not Muslims. None of them follow Islam. They each have their own book, the Circle 7 Quran, which is a rewriting of, of a Quran to interpret for that group. And with the Nation of Islam, they have, they, they have the Quran, but they don't really follow the Quran. Their book that they follow is the message to the black man. That's their Bible. That's the one they keep referencing. So those are the books, those are the reinterpretation uh, of these so-called religions, which they're not religions, they're just groups. So, and the NAACP, of course, that's a Jewish-created organization. Same thing with Black Lives Matter, Southern, Southern uh, Poverty Law Center, and the uh, Urban League. All white organizations. Again, the truth be told, blacks don't really have any homegrown, successful organizations. I know some people might bring up Marcus Garvey and his bullshit. But again, he falls into this category too because I've already said, how come this, uh, this guy came over from his country trying to tell black Americans to go to Africa when he could have just stayed in Jamaica and told them to go to Africa? How come he didn't tell them to go to Africa? That's the key thing you got to understand. A lot of people started making excuses as to why he didn't tell his own people to go to Africa. They said the political climate in Jamaica was too hardcore. Oh, if it was hardcore, then that's the perfect time to tell your people to, hey, forget the white man, let's go to Africa. But instead, he took the time to come all the way from Jamaica to New York to tell us to go to uh, Africa. Black America. And at the end of the day, like most uh, Pan-Africanists and African-centered Afrocentrists, Marcus Garvey never even set foot in Africa. They keep selling us on Africa, but when it's time to go to Africa themselves, they're not trying to hear that. So the Israelites... As legend has it, they've been started in 1969. They tell you to hell with Africa. See, all these groups are kind of related in their ideology. And uh, one can say that the Israelites continues the uh, tradition of taking a religion or a group and making it black. Whether it's Islam... Christianity and the Hebrew Israelites being Hebrews. But of course, 
the Bible, it, 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 I mean, it is black. I mean, those are black people, not white people. Christianity is a white creation, which is not the same as the Bible. That's why when you go to church, you never come out of church saying, man, I know the Bible. Again, the church is the same thing as the nation of Islam. They show the Quran, they show the Bible. They might even reference a passage here and there, but they don't follow the rules of the Bible. They don't follow the rules of the Quran. Christianity is its own thing because they would tell you not to eat pork, not to eat the shrimp and the lobster, but instead that's what they always do. That's the main thing they do is eat pork. White and black Christians alike. So again, this is pretty clear what's going on here. You know, this is a reimagining of religions to control people. And then they're usually Freemason back, which ultimately is the control of the white man over the Negroes because they feel, okay, I got the power of the, the white man backing me. So they feel more confident. It's like a black man who has a white girlfriend and he uh, got her pregnant. He feels real strong, real confident because he's like, I'm down with the white people now. Fuck black people. So they feel strong. You know, they get that extra uh, boost. But when they're with their own people, they don't have, they don't feel so strong and so confident. This is what these uh, Freemason religions do. Now the Israelites. So this is the question. The other ones were easy to, inter to interpret and, and bust them on their BS. With the Israelites, I'm not sure if they can be busted or not. But I'm going to throw some things that arouse me a little bit of suspicion. One line is that they say, I forgot the chapter in the Bible, but they say Ham is the descendant of the Egyptians, Libyans, Canaanites, and uh, who, uh, somebody else, but not the Negro. So they use that line to say, hey, we're the Israelites because we were called Negroes. I guess that's a way of them flipping what the white man must have switched up in the Bible because we know damn well uh, during the biblical times there was nobody called a Negro. That we know off the top. So even though they say the King James Version wasn't switched around, or edited, uh, or tweaked, so to speak. Just that line alone tells you something must have been up because how are you gonna have the word Negro in the Bible? I didn't really look at it to see it, but they said that they, they've been reading it from the Bible and it said Negro, so that just can't be, of course. Uh, so from the Israelite perspective, it says, the white man called us Negroes, so that's why we're not African, because it says ham comes from the dark-skinned races, but not the Negroes. But, of course, Israelites are supposed to be Semitic, and that's what they say. They say we're Semitic, or Semitic, but that's supposed to be another group. But here's the thing. My interpretation of that passage is this. You know how it is. The white man never wants to say that the Egyptians were black. Libyans were black. And the, the, the Canaanites. All these people were clearly black. I mean, and of course, Ham, Cush. That's black, of course. So I think that's the way of the white man just trying to throw that line in there to say, you Negroes, these are not your people. But they're dark skin, but they're not you. But we know they're not Indians, and they're all in Africa. Canaanites, you look at them, they're black people. So I think that's where that is, but I guess, hey, man, I'm not going to fault them for that because, hey, man, white man likes lying, so, hey, they might as well use that line against the white man. Now, the other thing is they talk about the slave ships, which, of course, I, in history, I really can't think of any group prior to us 
who were shipped on slave ships. So I guess that fits. If, if you're talking about the so-called white Jew, we know they, they weren't slaves at all. They were the slave masters. They weren't shipped on uh, slave ships to other people's countries. In fact, their, lie, their, their whole history is a lie when they keep saying that they, uh, the Negroes repeat it too, without evidence. It tells me they must be working for the white man because they keep saying that uh, Jews were kicked out of everybody's country because they keep trying to take over everybody's country. If they were kicked out of everybody's country, then why are they in everybody's country and running everybody's country? Doesn't make sense, does it? They run the economy of everybody's country and they run their country directly. I think even Sweden has a Jewish uh, president or leader, complete with the yarmulke on his head too. So again, we have to stop going by the lies, the propaganda, people control the media, so they're gonna put whatever lies out there about themselves and other people at their will because they, they control the media. And then of course money will make a Negro rape and kill his own mother. I mean, that you, you name the price, which is usually lower for the black man, and he'll do black backflips for the, uh, for the white man. So the Jew has all the money, so obviously he can just make black people just do anything. And uh, so anybody you see arguing for the Jewish fairy tales, and uh, they're on the tape. No question about that. They're not ignorant. They're on the tape. So... White Jews didn't come on slave ships, okay. We know white Jews don't natively speak a Semitic language. And their current Hebrew that they speak, that's not their language. And it's not even the real Hebrew. In fact, uh, their Hebrew, their speaking Hebrew is the same as Tyrone Johnson. I'm just making up a name. Or just to say... Pookie uh, Williams. <laughs> Apparently, that's another name that's out there. I'm just making names up. Though. I'm not trying to specify anybody. Let's say Pookie Williams. He says, I want to be a, a Muslim. Now, he, now he's Abdul Rahman. Then, of course, you learn the Quran, then you start speaking the Arabic, which is why they say you must, must know the Quran in Arabic. It's an imperial uh, situation. That's why you got to pray to Mecca because... No matter what, they always want to want to uh, let let it be known that Mecca was the source of uh, Islam and the uh, conquest. So you you pray to Mecca. That's how they rearrange capitals. That's why the same thing with the Catholics and the Christians. They took uh, the capital of Christianity from Jerusalem and put it in Rome. So now people think Rome is a holy land, but Rome is not. You know, it's just the powers that be put it there. So, you know, this is the same thing. This is this is what we have going on. And uh, the Jews are like Muslim converts. Speaking, not, not all of them speak the so-called Hebrew. When they do, they act like that's their native language. Their native languages are Turkish, German, Russian, those are their those are their native languages. All those kind of areas. Steinberg, Bremberg, Rottenberg, those are not Semitic names. That's not their history, that's not their culture. They're converts. But again, I guess being a Jew in the secret society is working for them. So as long as it's working for them, you're not gonna tell them any different. But um when it comes to the Israelites, they seem to be able to get a whole lot of crew members. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different camps. They have people join up a lot. They preach on Saturdays, preach in the streets according to the way the Bible says do it. And not the church, even though I think they would probably attract a whole lot of people if they had a church. But of course, I always say you take out, take out the money from the church, the churches will fall. Nobody would be giving a damn about the Bible or God. You take away the money. Only reason why people build so many churches is because it's a money-making machine. That's what it's all about. But anyways, the Israelites, they have a whole bunch of different camps. Some say that some have a 501c3, which is Nathaniel's crew. 
the the purple and gold guys, which they do have some nice outfits, nice branding and all that. I give it to them. <laughs> Uh, so they say that those guys are on the taking and Nathaniel, Nathaniel was a cop, which he did a admit he was and all that kind of stuff. But here I look at the basics. It takes a lot for black people to get up and do something that a lot of black people probably wouldn't want to do, let alone for free, which is to get up and preach every Saturday, even if you have to go to work. So I think, I'm assuming, these guys must be getting paid a stipend, maybe $50 for the day or some shit like that to get out there because we know damn well blacks just are not going to get out and leave. But that's just my guess. But I could be wrong. So um, I'm guessing that they get paid for it. Another thing I've noticed with a lot of them, a lot of them seem kind of off as if they're slightly slow or slightly retarded. I'm not trying to insult anybody, but I'm just trying to say that that sounds like what it might be from what I see. And But one thing that they are, they are impressive with their, how they learn the Bible. I can't even fathom how they teach it to make people remember it like they do so they can just pull out the verses. They know what's what. And call it out. That's what's impressive about them. And that's why the Christians hate them. But some people who believe in the Bible or claim to believe in it, they become impressed with them because shit, they're calling it out. You don't see the preacher in church calling the verses out. They just call the same old verses that they uh, know and that they use to manipulate. But they call them out. The, the Israelites, I give them that. Matter of fact, that's the best thing I like about them is the fact that they are following the Bible as it is written, whereas Christianity is following Christianity as they make their own laws. So the Israelites are the truest of these outfits. But I remember Sa Netter, I keep saying Sa Netter, Sa, Sa Netter. <laughs> He had these Israelites on years ago, a few years ago. I I think I called in or I did a live. I think I could have called in. And um, obviously, this is when my man was editing his videos when he does his live feeds, the live feeds he used to do when when it wasn't common for everybody to do live feeds. Now everybody and their mother's doing a live feed. I used to wonder why, but looking at Yvette Carnell with that $200 donation she got last night, and I saw her face when she got it, I see why people are doing the live feeds. They want that money. Same thing like the church or strip club. Preach, get that money thrown out. You could do that in the street, too. Anyways, I might go live my damn self, but I, I, got, I need a 1,000 subs, though. I'm not going to go live on what I got. With 15, probably 15, 20 people might come in the live feed. I'm not going to do that. It has to be strong. But anyways, he had uh, Nasi on there, the guy you remember he used to deal with. I asked, matter of fact, I asked some other questions too. I asked those Dominicans that he used to have on there. And they used to call themselves black. I said, of course, those aren't the darkest Dominicans, but I asked the question to those Dominicans. I said, when you go and apply for a job or what have you, do you put black down or Hispanic? They said they put Hispanic down. So I said, case closed. You're not black. You don't feel that you are black because if you felt that you were really black, you would put down black. So that was the case closed on that. Then I asked Nasi, what did I say to him? I said, where is the passage in the Bible? that says that we are Israelites. He couldn't find it, and he said something to the effect that what difference does it make if we can find it or not? <laughs> as long as we feel that we are Israelites. I said, damn, that's not cool. Even General Yohanna said something to the same effect on a Sarnetta video when he was having the 
Passover or whatever. Yeah, the Passover. And he said something like to the effect that, uh, what difference does it make if we're the, if we can prove it in the Bible or not, as long as the people feel that they are and they're bringing black men together for positive reach, uh, reasons. So s small lines like that, they're, it's, they're hanging by a, a thread with the doctrine. But they say that they're not a religion, so that's cool. But I believe that people do need structure, so that's why I'm not going to hate on them, because if they're really true about what they're into, so be it. You know? But I still wonder, you know, if they're getting a stipend. And here's my grand theory. Because, as you know, the Jews take over everything. They have taken over everything. They hate black people with a passion. If the Jewish media didn't have the propaganda, anti-black propaganda, every day, with local news, national news, you see something concerning somebody black, a black person's face is plastered all over the media, internet, every day. And then they have the, the paid trolls that they pay off on whether it's Yahoo, YouTube, wherever, to do the same thing. Niggas this, niggas that, uh, prison, go to Africa, blah, blah, blah. They want to keep beating the African stuff into you for some odd reason. It's like they need a mass brainwashing campaign to keep reminding you to go to Africa. You're African, you're African. They had the black uh, scholars that keep saying Africa, Africa, Africa to keep beating it into your head. You see a black face doing it. The Jamaicans come over here. They beat it into our heads. Uh, if you're not African, you're a coon. And then you have the Israelites who say that they're not African. So, again, the issue, I think, could be happening with the Israelites. This, this is a big if. Because I did address this online and nobody commented. Which made me think, okay, maybe I'm on to something because nobody commented on it. I said, I think Israelites could be paid off and put up by the white Jew because obviously the Jews are going towards their new world order, which will eventually, after it's all said and done, they're going to announce that, okay, we're the ones running the show. So I think they're trying to get black people to... Get away from Christianity with the Israelites and go into being a Jew. That's what I believe. Because that's what it is. I mean, you think about Christianity, people who claim to follow the Bible. If everything in there is for the Israelites, then Christianity itself can't exist because the Bible is not for them. It's not for anybody who's a so-called Christian. It's only for the Israelites, so that means... It's a limited number of people, people who technically shouldn't exist anymore. And we know they're not the white Jews, that's that's for sure. But um, I think that could be the case, man. These, these white Jews could be financing these guys. So once everything comes to an end, they'll have the, the recruits and the ones who are down with it get saved by the white Jews and the ones who are not. They're going to have some problems. So that's what I believe. And given the fact that nobody responded, I might be on to something. So, you know, that's something to think about. But of all the groups out there that talk about the white man, I say the Israelites are the truest to what they preach. You know, especially when they go out and uh, wear the outfits, preach the word. Although you see some of them, they wear, they wear uh, T-shirts. And, uh, you know, they, they, they tone it down on the, dre on the dress. GMS, I don't know why they wear their uh, cheap-looking cutout outfits, but the Nathaniel, I forgot the name of their crew, but the purple and gold, man, I got to admit, man, when it comes to styling, man, <laughs> they got the shit, man. They got, they got the style, man. But people have pointed out that they're... Uh, definitely a Jewish Illuminati back the type of group they pointed that out so but when it comes to style and branding they got it man 
the GMS, they have the worst branding. And they're too raw. A lot of them are hypocrites, too. Let me, I was about to close it out, now. I just thought of something else. The other thing I'm not too crazy about with the Israelites is this. They'll say, we're not African. Damn the Africans. Those stinking Africans. And when they say stinking Africans, I know they're saying that to emphasize to themselves and to others that don't call us African. That's why they say stinking African, but they just call the white man the devil and crackers. But um, I don't think they have to say stinking Africans because, I mean, but again, that's just to make emphasis that, okay, we're, we're, we're saying we're not African. But the funny part is they don't like the Africans, but they'll have the Jamaicans in their crew who say that they're Africans. And the Jamaicans, they hate our guts. You see, when they do have Jamaicans in the crew, they try to dominate the crew of each of these Israelite crews. But more so than the Jamaicans, they have the so-called Latinos. Come on, man. Everybody knows that these damn Latinos, the last thing they're trying to do is be black. And even the, the Israelite Latinos, they still don't call themselves black. They call themselves brown or Latino. Even the Puerto Ricans or the Cubans. I mean, come on, man. If they can't call themselves black, what do you need them for? And the Mexicans, obviously, they damn sure hardly want to get down with the program. Native Americans, they get them. But, you know, I just can't understand, you know, what the deal is. You call them your brothers, the Africans. I can understand it. Africans, they, they, they make sure to separate themselves from black America Americans in the U.S. And when they're in the U.K., they make sure they separate themselves from the Caribbeans out there. Which is understandable because the Caribbeans out there kind of loudmouths, hell, hell raisers, and trying to speak for all, all black people out there and they can get others in trouble, so to speak. But, um, again, these Latinos, these Hispanics, they mix with each other to try and mix out the black. That's why they look the way they look. And they all think that they're white. Or most of them think that they're white. They want to be white. You got to listen to the language. Matter of fact, I might do one on that on there, even though I already did one on the uh, old TRS show. I might upload that. Because uh, people definitely need to understand that these is there's no such thing as black and brown. Matter of fact, I think I put that up there already. There's no such thing as black and brown unity. And there's no such thing as brown people. We're the ones who are brown. If Hispanics had it their way, they'd be called white. But these Mexicans, these, these motherfuckers are darker than I am. I mean, on a whole, man, they're, they're darker. Puerto Ricans, Cubans. I went to North Bergen, New Jersey. A whole bunch of Cubans in that town. Obviously, I could, I, a guy like me can blend in, but... You know, these Hispanics, there's just so many of them, man. I mean, and then I see all these Texas plates, California plates. They're shipping them in by the millions, man. Which means that after a while, I think, and this, you can stamp this one. After a while, I think the white man might try to cause some tensions between black people and Hispanics. And start a race war. I think that's what this, this black hate in the media is all about. It's warming everybody up to hate on black Americans and then once after a while they're going to pull the big uh, event and probably try to wipe us out and keep the Hispanics as the slaves Hispanics got to watch out man they may be treating you right right now but as it is always the case when you move in with, to somebody's house they treat you right for about a month then after that it's whatever so you better watch out if black people go you're on your own and when you're on your own you're in trouble 